What is up guys, it's your boy Solam here, and back with another Classic WoW video for Season of Discovery. Now today we are watching Jerome's most recent video titled SOD Phase 2 Prep in 5 minutes or less, WoW Season of Discovery. If you have been watching my videos or my streams, you know that I've been doing a lot of Phase 2 Prep myself, and I would be very interested to... I would be very interested to see if Jerome covers anything in this video that I haven't actually prepared so far for phase 2. So once again we are checking out Jerome's video, the link will be down below to his video as well in the video descriptions if you want to check it out. You can and that way you can skip my commentary because it's a 5.5 minute video but I'm gonna bet it's gonna be like a 10 minute commentary. Uh, we'll have to wait and see right how much I stop the video and what I have to add or talk about. So here we go boys. Okay, here we go. Hey guys, it's time for my five minutes or less phase two prep guide. This is okay. the fastest and easiest prep you can possibly do if you've left things a little bit last minute. After all, we want to be as prepared as possible, but we just don't have infinite time to do it. So let's talk about the absolute best and quickest prep for phase two. First though, we need to talk about the importance of phase two prep. Yes, phase two is nearly here, but there is still plenty of time to do last minute prep. With proper planning, you can cut out annoying tasks that would otherwise have to be done in Phase 2. Yeah. Things like leveling ults from 1 to 25 or just getting flight paths. Even farming Phase 2 Prebis is something you could already be doing. Think I will say there's a significant level boost coming by the way if you want to level alts in Phase 2. The thing is though, you can spend the time now and not spend that time in Phase 2, but if you have to level an alt in Phase 2, leveling will be significantly faster. Think of phase 2 prep like you're putting in the time now to free up time later. Then the time you free up can be spent fighting for Gurabashi trinkets, blasting a Rathi Basin, and clearing the new Nomergon raid. Yep. The problem is that phase 2 prep can be very overwhelming. We need to know exactly what to do in the shortest amount of time to maximize our efficiency and our time spent. So let's start with the act of leveling your- what I'm personally doing, by the way, and just before he gets into it, I'm stacking up at least 20 quests on all my characters. That might seem excessive to some of you, but like all the characters that I'm planning to play in Phase 2, I'm just doing 20 quests. Because at the end of the day, you're gonna have to do those quests anyway, and let's just say doing 20 quests. I've been doing it recently, it takes me about 5 hours per character. That is 5 hours I would have to spend in Phase 2 anyway, and probably with more competition, with more people doing the quest as well in Phase 2, so by doing them now, I'm just ready to hand them in when Phase 2 comes out, and then I can get like the mob kill experience from doing the follow-ups, and yeah, just doing 20 quests seems like a good idea to me on pretty much every character, or at least the ones that you plan to level to level 40 at some point in Phase 2. Your character and actually getting the runes. If you haven't gotten all your characters to 25 yet that you plan to play, this is really the time. This is where RFC and stockades boosting really comes into play. For less than 15 gold, you can get a character from 8 to 19 in just a few hours. This is huge because then you can start getting really? rested XP at level 25 with the new patch while you play your main. Meanwhile, this is also the time to be quickly grabbing all the rest of your runes. There are now summoning services to nearly every rune location. Getting any individual rune really won't take more than a few minutes, with a few exceptions like meta. Speaking of summoning, by the way, if you do want to make a lot of gold when phase 2 comes out, Scarlet Monastery farming is going to be huge in phase 2, so having a warlock with like two friends or two accounts of your own to summon people at the um, at Scarlet Monastery is going to be huge, man. The amount of gold you can make from doing that is going to be ridiculous, especially on the Alliance side, because I guess Horde you can just move to Undercity and then walk there. But for Alliance, it is such a long walk to go to Scarlet Monastery. So if you're playing Alliance, the gold you can make by summoning on the Alliance side to SM is going to be huge, man. All you really need is LFG bulletin board to quickly see who's selling summons at each location. Also on the add-on front, as you travel around, make sure to use Gathermate to locate chests to quickly open and get waylaid supplies. You definitely don't want to have to go back on all your alts in phase 2 to get waylaid supply rep. Talking about having to go back and get things for the next phase, it's time to talk about gear. The fastest prep you can do for phase 2 is bags. You can pick up a Dark Moon bag for just 5 to 6 gold using my spreadsheet to buy your own from the vendor. Then Ooh. you can get 12 slot bags for the rest of your slots. Currently, getting 10 extra bag slots will cost you a total of about 25 gold. If I can pick up about 30 stacks of silk and some greens while I'm leveling, I'll easily pay for the bag cost. Another quick thing you can do is to use 60 upgrades to work on your pre-bis list right now. That'll save you time instead of having to do it when the phase actually launches. 
for me, a ton of the previous pieces are already available in BFD, and if I can get them right now, I'll be saving hours in Phase 2. Items like the Rod of the Ancient Sleepwalker and the Void Pro That stuff never drops, man. I swear. I've been doing the raid on my Warlock every single week, like every single reset from the first reset. Haven't seen the staff once. Granted, I have it on one alt, so I can't really uh, complain too much, but I don't have it on the one character that I'm planning to main in phase 2, and it really annoys me, because I haven't seen it drop on my Warlock a singular time. Like, the staff I feel like has less than 5%, while the sword and the bow feels like they have significantly more at least. While the staff is wanted by so many people, like casters want them, healers want them, the bow is only wanted by hunters. The, the sword is only wanted by what, warriors and paladins? But if you're playing a priest healer, a mage, mage healer, mage DPS, warlock, boomkin, resto druid, all the healers and casters want the staff, and still it has the lowest drop rate in the entire raid, and is wanted by the most people. It is dumb. Pearl Trinket are very unlikely to have replacements in phase 2. I have a previous guide to all the gear you should be saving in phase 1 that's relevant in phase 2. Check it out in the top right. Either way, it's definitely way better to get those BFDs out of the way now on my ult rather than having to do it in phase yeah. 2. Yeah. At the same time, I'm already working on specific items for Phase 2 Prebis. <laughs> Surprisingly, it'll actually save you time to get items like the Dark Hooded Cape right now before anybody else is farming them. Or in my case, PvP items like the Advisor's Ring. I'm not a Speaking of BFD, by the way, before he continues on, if you have any alts that you're planning to play at Phase 2 at level 40, you can actually level up by doing BFD. So what me and my guild are doing, we're doing BFD every single reset on two sets of alts. And on launch, we're also doing it on mains, because once again, it does give experience. So we're doing one last BFD on the mains at the launch of phase two, and then we scatter and keep leveling. So we can go and do whatever we're doing to level, but we're starting off phase two by doing BFD, hopefully getting an epic or two, and then just scattering and doing our own stuff. Right, and then every three days we meet up once again, do BFD on the alts, and hope to get some epics on those as well. Plus getting however much experience it is, we don't really know yet, but it's said to give a significant amount of experience from doing BFD, and it's on completion, so by doing the entire raid, you get a significant amount. Asking you to go for Exalted Warsong right now. That being said, a few minutes of Ashen Veil vale every few hours will get you some really nice pre bis gear. Yeah. There's a really nice blue bow, but I'm more excited about the two separate rings I can run. On top of prepping... I I'm sorry for all the interrupts, by the way, but one more thing that I'm doing, this is not like phase 2 prep, but it's phase 2 stuff, is that you want to have Exalted with Warzone Gulch, but if you're like me and you don't want to actually farm Warzone Gulch because you might not be playing a meta class, so finding a group is kind of difficult, I'm just going to be doing the Ashen Veil vale event every single week to get the mark. The mark gives you 1000 rep, and on a weekly basis that's 4000 rep per month for like what? two minutes of work every single week, just have your heart soul in Astronaut or something, or move there once per week, you don't even have to finish the event, kill one boss or one guard, pick up the mark, and you're done. Your gear, you'll also need 45 gold for your mount and your training if you're on a yep. rep. Warning, this method will be bannable after February 8th, do not do it after this date. One of the quickest ways to make that gold is GDKPs. <laughs> GDKPs are very controversial, but if you need some last minute gold, it can be very worth it. Just using your lockouts to make 20 to 30 gold in a matter of 45 minutes. A lot less players are looking for gear right now, so you can either snipe a bunch of gear for yourself or get a bunch of free gold. Another way to make some free gold is pre-questing. What's nice about pre-questing is that you'll be getting some free gold from the early parts of the chains. And you'll be saving time from having to do the quest when the phase actually hits. That's what I'm doing. I've attached a horde and an alliance pre-questing route you can do in about a day of questing. One last reason to pre-quest is to get all the flight paths for phase 2. One thing I did was buy the world tour package for my alt to get all the relevant flight paths for about 5 gold. This is a huge time saver compared to slowly running around to every flight path. One more Wait, so how do you buy that? Does somebody have summons at every single flight path? If you do, that's another way to make gold before phase 2 comes out. Selling the whole world tour package. So you can get people to pay you, and when you have like a full 5 man or 10 man team, you just log on to your summoning characters, placed at every single flight path location. 
Okay, L yo, whoever started doing that, that is a crazy gold making idea. And you can probably get rich, especially now when people are doing phase 2 prep. Because running around, gathering those flight paths, it does take a lot of time. Quick prep tip is that it's no secret which materials will be needed in the next phase. If you go on your favorite profession site like Wowhead or Wow Professions, you can see exactly what items you need to get to 225. I've already bought relevant materials and recipes for cooking so I can skip to 225 in just a few minutes. You can do the exact same thing with any profession like engineering. I'm going to be skipping the first 20 levels with prep I've already done right now. Mark. See, I've already got all the materials for explosive sheaves in my bag ready to go just like the guide says. So now we've gotten leveled up, we've farmed the Prebis, we've gotten gold, and we have a huge stack of quests ready to go. Hopefully you've avoided getting ganked during all the escort quests like I did. <laughs> now I want to hear your thoughts on this comment from Kakashi. He mentions that the Parse culture and the Min-Max culture are causing him to enjoy the game less. What do you think about that? Do you think all the prep and Min-Max culture is causing you to enjoy the game less than you normally would? Let's talk about it in the comments below. And make sure to subscribe because the No More Gone Bis Consumable video is coming out on Saturday. It's going to be huge. Then after that, check out my Phase 2 DPS tier list to pick the perfect class for Phase 2. You might be surprised at my theory for the Phase 2 number 1 DPS class. Okay, there we go. That, that's the video. You don't have to watch it again. <laughs> but that's the video. Really good video. Really a lot of prep in five minutes right there. And I agree with pretty much anything. To talk about the comment at the end, like people min-maxing has always been a part of the game. And to me, it's not really making me enjoy the game any less. Just to like add a verbal comment to that. Personally, I love preparing. I've also, like in the past, I haven't really been a fan of it all the time, but when I don't want to prepare, like, I just don't prepare. If you don't like prepping, you probably don't care about hitting level 40 as soon as possible anyway, because in order to do that, you have to prep in some way, shape or form. If you care about leveling fast, you're doing some kind of prep. You're either prepping the quest you're doing, you're prepping in advance in the game, you're prepping in real life, you're learning as much as you can. Whenever you care about doing something as fast or as efficient as possible, you are doing some sort of prep. So if you're not prepping, you probably don't care about the whole min-maxing culture, at which point why should other people caring make you enjoy the game less? I don't know, just some food for thought. Either way, really good video once again, and um, it really makes sense. And it's a lot of the same prep that I'm personally doing. Like the, prepara the profession preparation, absolutely huge, you can skip like 20 levels. And for cooking, you can skip absolutely all of them, which could be really relevant for gold making as well. A lot of the recipes that you can, can make gold with require 200 plus cooking. So getting there as soon as possible could be huge for you. And to skill up professions, you only have to be level 26. So if you have pre-completed quests and hand those in, you can have all your professionals at level 26 and get them all skilled up on day one and just start raking in gold. Either way, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like on this one, then go on to No Hit Jerome's video as well, the link will be down below, and give a like on his video and subscribe to his channel. As always, thank you so much for watching me, reaction, me reacting today, I really appreciate it, thank you so much, and I'll see you again very soon.